You can learn a lot about food through the language of food, which is why today I want to focus on the different names that people in the UK and the US have for the very same vegetable. Okay, lovely people, let's do this. Okay, cards, please. Thank you. We are going to start with one of my favorite vegetables, eggplant. Now here in the US, we use the English word eggplant. In England, they use the French word aubergine. Now, 90% of the internet will stop the story there. The English use the French, done. Oh no, 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 it's way more interesting than that. Let's start with the English word eggplant. Why is it even called eggplant? Well, you can actually grow eggplants today that are heirloom varieties that are small and white. They look very much like eggs. I've grown them in the past in my garden. Now, aubergine is really fascinating because if you trace the root of that word, you follow the original movement of the native eggplant through the world. So, okay, let me see if I can get this straight without consulting my card. So, the French word aubergine comes from the Spanish word berenjena, which comes from the Arabic word al badanjon. Am I getting that right? Yeah. Which comes from the Hindi word bagan. I'm sorry to everybody who is a native speaker of any of those languages because I'm sure I'm butchering all of them. But the idea is that that exact uh, language path traces back to the original uh, native area for the eggplant. So the eggplant originally comes from India. So you can imagine that that vegetable was harvested, taken by Arab speaking traders back through the Middle East. The Moors brought it up into Spain. Spain is next to France, right? And then got to the UK. Hooray! Zucchini versus courgette. Okay, so here's a case of both countries using foreign words. So here in the US, we use the Italian word zucchini, and in the UK, they use the French word courgette. Both of those words mean little squash. So zucca in Italian means squash, and courge means squash in French. Um, that's just a case of the UK being close to France and adopting the vegetable from there. Uh, Italian immigrants taking zucchini over to America and us learning the word from them. The next one I love, arugula versus rocket. Now I love arugula. I grow it in my garden. It's really easy to grow. I love the spiciness in that. Now this is so interesting because the roots of both of these words start out in the same location, but it is a different story of migration. So we all go back to Italy for this word. Um, in Italy, the standard Italian word is rucola, but there are regional dialects, right? So there are different names for the very same vegetable. So the Calabrese word, which is the most Southern region is rucolo. And the Southern Italians, particularly Calabreses, moved in mass numbers to the US and they brought their pronunciation to us and we sort of adapted it to arugula. However, the Northern Italians call it something else, rucchetta. So rucchetta went over the Alps into France and there they adapted it to roquette, right? Well, this vegetable, like the others we saw before, went from France into the UK and they adapted the roquette to rocket, something a little bit more Anglo for their mouths. That sounds weird. <laughs> On to the next. Cilantro versus coriander, that polarizing herb. You either love it or you hate it, except for me because I just like it. <laughs> so cilantro is the Spanish word. Um, that's what we use here in the US. In the UK, they use coriander. Now, the funny thing is here in the US, we use cilantro for the fresh leaf. We use coriander for the name of the seed that that plant produces. 
Uh, cilantro is a rich part of Mexican cuisine, and it is likely how uh, Americans first encountered that herb in a big way. So we adopted the Mexican word cilantro. Coriander seed is, however, not a big part of Mexican cuisine. So we probably encountered it more through the European influence and adopted that coriander word. In the UK, I have heard the leaf referred to as fresh coriander and the seed as coriander seed. Makes sense. Okay, beans. You guys know from my last video, I love beans. <laughs> so in the UK, you have butter beans. Here, lima beans. In the UK, broad beans. Here, fava beans. In the UK, green beans. Here, generally string beans, but you will hear green beans. In the UK, chickpea. Here, garbanzo or chickpea. Of course, you guys have all watched our awesome How Does It Grow chickpea episode, so you know where the derivation of garbanzo comes from. I'm not gonna say it here, you gotta go back and look. Mange tu, we say snow pea, <laughs> which actually makes no sense because those particular beans are not harvested when it's snowing. But mange tu actually kind of makes sense because it means eat all and you eat the whole pod, everything all at once. But really, when we're talking about eating beans in the UK, there's really just one kind of bean, and that's baked beans. Don't get me started about baked beans. Okay, get, get me started about baked beans. Here we go. I hate those things. <laughs> I love beans, but I do not like the kind of sweet sauce that baked beans comes in, and that's literally the most common way that beans are eaten in the UK. Baked beans, on toast is like their most common sort of way of eating them, but they also find their way to another wonderful British creation. Let's talk about the jacket potato versus the baked potato. Now, here in the US, a baked potato is basically like a russet style potato. Um, you know, the kind with a rough, thick skin and a very kind of starchy middle. Same in the UK. Uh, why they call it a jacket potato? I have two theories. One, because that skin is quite kind of thick and when it bakes up, it kind of comes away a little bit from the potato, kind of looks like it's sort of enrobing like a jacket, the interior. Maybe that, maybe because they like to dress up that potato. I don't know. <laughs> Let's talk about what exactly a jacket potato is because it's a bit like a religion in the UK. I grew up eating baked potatoes very simply. Open them up, slather them with butter. I think that's the most common way here. Sometimes we throw a little cheese on it. In restaurants, maybe you see something a little bit fancier with a bit of sour cream, some chives, I don't know. But in the UK, oh boy, they, it's an art. <laughs> It's not fine art, but it is an art. When I think of a jacket potato, I think about going to National Trust places. These are these like, you know, big, beautiful, historic houses that you're allowed to, you know, come and visit. But they all have a little like tea house, a little cafe, which I love actually. I love that kind of culture. I love like going and exploring the grounds and then going and having like a piece of cake and some tea. But if you're going there for lunch, undoubtedly, the choices are a jacket potato and maybe like a piece of quiche. Not <laughs> high gourmet menu. <laughs> the jacket potatoes, they can range from having aforementioned cheese on top, uh, creme fraiche, they're not usually like a sour cream kind of culture, baked beans, like I said before, slathered on top of a baked potato. Delish. <laughs> okay, cut. Okay, so in the UK, they say beetroot. Here in the US, we don't have time for that. We say beet. In the UK, they say sweet corn. Mm -mm, we just say corn. Then again, there's an outlier. We say rutabaga here, and they say swede, but frankly, who eats that anyway? Okay guys, 
That's all I have time for today. Tell me, do you want more of these British versus American videos? I could think of so many from like sweets to baked goods to brekkie. Let me know in the comments below. Don't forget to subscribe, hit that bell icon so you're notified when each new video drops and find me on social media, True Food TV. Bye guys.